Well, welcome back to a new video, guys. If you do enjoy them, do take time to give them a thumbs up, possibly share them on your Facebook or group pages. Uh, you'll be doing me a wonderful service, and I'd appreciate that very much. And do take time to drop a comment down below. I do try to respond in batches to most people's comments or questions. If you've got any questions, any comments, please pop them down below. It's a joy to speak to most of you, or, or reply in type form. Um, if you're not subscribed, don't forget, like I just nearly did, to hit the bell icon and subscribe button. As you can see, I've got the Vox 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 <laughs> e-bike next to me. Um, it's all unpacked. And um, we are indeed out for a the Nocturnal Angler. Maybe I should rename the channel to the Nocturnal Angler. Um, we are out for a nocturnal fishing trip. Conditions, they're not bad, but the, it's blue, it's misty. I prefer a bit of cloud cover. There's The moon's out behind me a bit. But we are out this evening, going to be doing some barbel fishing. Just fishing the one spot and um, giving it a go. As you can see, it's dark, so obviously into the night. And seeing if we can pick up a barbers. Anyway, I'm going to mosey on, get my gear unpacked, show you the rig, show you the bait that I'm using, show you, even try and show you the swim. Now, that's never an easy thing to do. It's not easy to show a swim, shine a light on it. I always worry about you know, not being able to show you guys as much if I'm doing a night trip only. And um, also worry then that I'm spooking the fish. But the swim that's in front of me, reasonable depth, I'm going to try and show you the spot because I like to try and give you guys an idea of the spot that I'm fishing and it adds something to a video, which is hard to do when you're filming at night anyway. A lot easier in the daytime from that sense. Anyway, let's crack on, get the gear unpacked, show you the baits, show you the rigs, or the most basic rig ever, the low resistance running rig set up, and my tackle, and have a look at the swim, and get fishing. Right then guys, for those who have not seen my setup, thought I could show you what we're using today. So Shimano Purist Barbel Rod. These are actually STC, so they're Shimano travel concept, they're like six piece travel rod. Um, they're discontinued now, so you can't get hold of them, unfortunately. Beautiful rods, one and three quarter pound Tesco, but they're not too whippy. You know, they've they're got a nice through action to them, but they've got some, got some, for a one and three quarter, they've got some backbone. Let me put it that way. I mean, I'm quite happy to use these in flood water. I'm quite happy to even bomb out a, a lead wrap with a, with a bird seed ground bait around it with them. Um, really nice rods. Uh, paired that. As we're not fishing a massive river, I paired that with a nice Shimano X-Age. These are front drag Shimano X-Age. They're lovely reels. Once again, another discontinued uh, product by Shimano. But if you hunt about on eBay, I can assure you these are workhorses and they are built to last. I've had these donkey's years and they haven't let me down. What I like with them, front drag, very progressive front drag. You can really finely adjust it. And um, when you're playing the fish... That's always nice to be able to adjust and get a smooth, progressive drag. It's loaded with 12 pound, reliable, I stake my testicles on this, Shimano Technium in Visitec, 12 pound braking strain. Going from there, in good blue Peter fashion, I've already got my boilies sorted out and on. <laughs> so from there, low resistance, run ring, these are the Gardener Target ones. They're a plastic hook that in there where you can clip and just quickly change your weights. What's good with that is if you do get snagged, they will open up, you'll drop the lead, and hopefully you'll be connected to the fish and not snagged. Um, does work well. Nice quick change, low resistance. Then going down from there, you've got a buffer bead, you've got an anti-tangle tube. They're both by HLS Tackle. Then running down there, I'm slowly running out of this wonderful braid. This is Drennan Sink Braid. You can no longer purchase this. Down from that, you've got a little Palatrax egg weight. And that just helps, if a fish shakes its head a bit, it just helps keep that hook bait dropping into its mouth nicely. Down from there, got a little, if I can show you, if it'll let me. There we go. Got a little kicker. And that on there is it's getting a bit of dew on it now as well. That's a 15 millimeter that I've rolled. That is the mainline 50-50 base mix, but that is with a very, very nice mixture. As you can see, I've mixed some birdseed in with that as well. That's a nice, because I am using birdseed ground bait, so I'm trying to always trying to adapt my baits a bit. So that's got 
mainline 50-50, a little bit of added bird seed to it. The mainline 50-50 is a milk protein base mix and boiling mix, and it does when you standard do it standard as it comes out of the um, pack and roll it, it will come out a milky white colour or creamy colour. But as you can see, this is quite brown. Now that is down to the liquid food additives and palatial stimulants that I've added to this and also a few different spices and yeasts. Now I will go through that in a later video, but it's working great, I can tell you that guys. It's, it's been, been good so far on this bait. And I'm wrapping that in also 50-50 matching paste. As you can see there, got a, that's a um, mere mortals liner liner. They're a lot cheaper than gardeners. So it helps kick it out. And that's a size 6 HOS wide gate. Strong, reliable, and if you buy them in bulk, work out 7p a hook. There's the paste. That's you roll that, you boil it, you've got your boilies. Uh, just make up enough spare with a few eggs. And that wraps around the boilie. That gives you a nice leak off all the way through your, you know, while your bait's out there. It slowly breaks down. I like to make my paste a bit thicker than some people do. It just means a slower leak off. And I also find, it's a very good tip, guys. If you, you make it a little bit thicker, it stays on longer. And I tell you what, I found out in my chub fishing days with crayfish, the little gits don't like anything that's a bit sticky and pasty like cheese paste they will eventually take it off but they'll touch it and they'll back off and they'll touch it again and back off so if you make it a little bit thicker and you've got the added bonus that it slowly leaks off and it keeps the little uh, I hate them I bloody hate them keeps them at bay I don't mean hate as in I'm scared of them I've, I've, I've trapped them I've caught them with socks when I've been on holiday I literally socks over my hands but I, I hate them when I'm fishing because they're a nightmare they ruin your rigs they mess with them something chronic so yeah make your paste a little bit thicker wrap your boilies in it it'll stay on a bit longer and it'll keep the crayfish at bay a bit right that in there that is the main line proactive that's uh you, i use sweet marine and i use their proactive and i use their m match course margin mixture now the marine the margin mixture on the margin mix, um, they're both fishy baits, quite quite a strong fish meal, crush pellet. The proactive is lighter and it's more more much more of a cereal ground bait. I like to sometimes switch to that when it's getting into autumn time as it is now, so I'm not over putting too much oils in for the fish, looking after the fish in that sense, and not overfeeding, not stodging them out. Now that mixture there, that's got a quite a high percentage of my Hafe's red band bird seed. You know, guys. I won't leave home without it. A mixture of that and there is some of the mainline hemp in there. That's all I do. I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be um, putting a few balls of this in. Four or five loose boilies. And then fish the um, mainline 50-50 boilie wrapped in paste. With a little PVA mesh bag of some very low oil. They're betaine pellets. Not one to use much of the way trout pellets these days or halibut pellets betaine pellets because they're low oil they still help attract the fish but you're not once again doing the fish damage which I think is very important you see a lot of pellets are used a heck of a lot of pellets are used and um, you know I've used pellets as I say and I still do use pellet but I don't pile it in and as I say these are going to be little mesh bag with the boilie boilie wrapped in paste and I'm going to glug it in some very yeasty meaty salty smelling additive that's for some of it. Anyone who's watching this and wants to skip ahead, please feel free to, but I'm just trying to impart some advice to those who might have not seen many of my Bible videos, and I don't always go into in-depth detail regarding what I'm using and what I'm doing for fear of boring people with waffle. Anyway, hope I've not spooked the fish, hope I've not bored you guys. Let's get the rod out there, shall we? Right, so this is the swim that we're fishing. As you might be able to or might be able to not make out just out over here out over here the river comes round it narrows and there's a nice sunken tree over here just to the right hand side so I'm going to be fishing out to that area nice looking spot as you can see you can probably see it now that area right there I'm going to try and get a bait just a little bit off of that area not 
too close, but close enough. And then fish locked up, hit and hold if I do get a fish on. Well, this is a nice area. You've got a nice walking pace. And the um, water's coming off of a weir pool to my left. Big pool area. And then it narrows down as it goes downstream. So you've got walking pace flow. You've got a nice depth. You've got some weed beds. Nice gravel. And over that side you've got a sunken tree. Which you can fish from another swim very close to it. But it's a bit suicidal. So I'm going to try and draw the fish out of the main area. And into the edge of that where the edge of the sunken tree is. Well, that's the plan anyway. Fingers crossed, eh? Well, there we go, guys. That's a very salty, salty, sickly smell, you might say. I don't know about sickly. It's got a real pungent aroma. Um, and what I forgot to mention is a lot of you guys will have seen on a lot of my videos that I tend to use a back lid. Now, I'm not using a back lid in this swim because I'm worried about the snag. And sometimes you can have a back lid on further up your line hoping to pin the line down and you've got to make your own judgments and choice whether it's too risky to use a back lid and in certain cases like here if you're near to a snag the back lid when you're playing the fish can loop up and it can snag you so I'm just saying in this case I'm not going to use a back lid like I normally do I normally put a back lid just up the rig stock rig stop just up my line and then a back lid but I'm not going to tonight just don't fancy risking it as I say with a snag nearby if the fish does take it and I'm playing the fish could end up lassoing over a snag, which we don't want to have happen, do we? Perfect. Close, but not too close to be dangerous. Once again, I'm fishing locked up, guys. Just the drag to play the fish, not allow the fish to tear off. Right then, best get my bum sat down on my landing mat and fingers crossed that my landing mat gets wet from a fish and not just wet from a dewy night. <laughs> I'll tell you what guys, it's a blooming misty night, misty dewy night, that's for sure. I was just recast, I was getting crayfished, which is something I'm used to. I'm as used to crayfish as most people are used to waking up in the morning and needing to take a wee. Is what it is though. Most of the southern waterways have got infestations of crayfish. So um, yeah, the line went tight. I always tend to feel the line from the reel just to see what the tension's like. And um, yeah, it was tight. So between a rock and a hard place, don't like to recast. I always feel it. You can ruin your swim, but if you're getting crayed. So I've recast. Um, as I lifted the rod up, I could feel the crayfish there. Tug of war. Um, I like little lobsters. Little mafia lobsters. Anyway, so I wound in. Recast. Managed to hit the same spot, which is always good. It's not an easy cast, really. It's about a tree to my left sticking out. So as I pivot to side cast... Um, Got to be careful you don't over pivot and end up swinging back into your own margin. So I managed to get it back into the spot. And I'll tell you what, I'm getting knocks at the moment. I'm wondering, I am wondering, because they look like they're either chub or a wary, a wary barbel having a little nibble. It's boom, 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 boom. So it's either that or it's a supersized crayfish. It's just got a funny feeling it's not. Anyway. Yeah, it's just gone again. Just doo -doo. tell you what I might do. I might strike this. I might strike this on the um, 
on the taps. Anyway, I'm going to turn the light off and um, things are going to looking like they might be getting interesting. Fingers crossed. At the end of the day, though, you've got to be in it to win it. You won't catch Fair Maiden's heart or Fair Fish's heart by being at home. We're in, guys. We're in. That was a good fish, guys. Good fish, Barbus, Barbus Maximus. Oh, God. I don't care if I've got snacks to my left. Oh, oh. oh. where does he think he's going, eh? few blanks guys and that's a quality looking rubber dub double oh what a cool car happy days i tell you what i've had a run of four blanks and in between that one wrap round which i didn't connect with tonight this fish was plucking pluck 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 and i thought i'm gonna hit this just as i put my hand on the rod it stopped plucking and it just ripped off what a cool car eh Oh, she's built like a beast, a beautiful muscular beast. What a beautiful Kennet Barbers. <sighs> Look at that towel. <laughs> Draw myself back a bit. Beautiful, eh? What a corker. What a perler. How about that for a well earned? Each fish is well earned. <sighs> Wonderful. Beautiful fish. And as always on a HOS wide gape size 6, strong hooks and do the job. Let's get this corker slip back to recuperate. And as I say, I'll tell, let you know the weight, but it's a cracking double by the looks of it. A cracking double. <laughs> Happy days. Off you go, Gil. Swim free and healthy. Well guys, all thoroughly packed up and thoroughly happy after a run of four blanks. You know, it's, um, <laughs> your mind starts playing tricks on you. I am one of 
for having a bone to pick and with a section of river if I know that I've got a good vibe about it, a good feeling. Um, I am one of those guys when he's got a bone to pick as an angler, he will have his bone and he will pick at it. <laughs> and um, sometimes can be quite bloody minded and um, stubborn. Um, does pay off, sometimes you get a kick in the teeth. You know, it is what it is. I was getting crayfish bites prior to this fish, but it's going through my mind. I recast, um, and um, I was getting some more taps. And I thought to myself, they just these didn't seem like crayfish bites. And they, I was thinking to myself, you know, as anglers, sometimes you know, especially when you're barbel fishing, you're waiting for that real wrap round. And just literally at that point, I was getting the taps. I my mind flitted back to when I had a 12 pound eight of real rouge towel. Um, after a run of blanks, similar run of blanks, um, that was on the Kennet as well. Um, we have been on the Kennet tonight, guys, um, in case I didn't mention it on the video. Um, and I remember back in that point when I was fishing the Kennet, I was getting a bite, tap, 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 and I thought to myself, I'm going to strike this, because normally we do tend to wait, don't we, until we get that good wrap round. And struck it, and it was only a very soft few taps, just like chub, chub bites, like light, very light chub plugs. That's how this bite was. And I thought to myself, you know what, I don't reckon this is crayfish. I reckon this is a fish. And it's been a little bit cagey. A little bit cagey. So I put my hand on the rod, just waiting. Boom, 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 boom. And then it went, boom, boom, pluck back. Almost like a crayfish bite, but just enough subtle difference. If you're used to fishing my rivers, and a lot of you guys do fish southern rivers, and you'll know what I mean when when I say you tend to know when you're getting a crayfish bite and although this was at that boom, 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 pluck it just didn't have that amount of you know static static kind of pawn tension to it and I got ready to strike a four next next couple of plucks I'm hitting this well I didn't need to there was no next couple of plucks the rods just wrapped over and I've set the hook and that was one heck of a scrap beautiful fish beautiful fish so nice to catch after, as I say, a run of blanks. 12 pound, 11 ounces. Beautiful, fighting fit, feisty. That's the way I like them. And returned, I hope you can see as best I, as I could show, because of the reed bed there, you know, I can't stand and put the camera right over like I normally do when I release the fish, because it is all false, false, um, false ground, so I'll go straight through into the, into the river, which I'm not doing. <laughs> but um, yeah, she swam off with vigor. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's been. So, tell you what, if you're going to break a blank or blank or break a runner blanks, that is the way to do it. As I say, sometimes you've got to be stubborn. There are a lot of the um, waterways like this beautiful river and like my Loddon, um, they've got a barbel heritage to them. And um, us anglers, we don't, you know, ones that stick at it and love our local waterways, we don't give up the ghost. But um, you do find that you have to search about for these fish because, you know, back in the day, and I do think certain areas of the Kennet are picking up, but back in the day, you know, the likes of Upper Benyons, etc., they used to be go-to places for catching barbel, you know, and the Kennet in general. Um, so, yeah, these days you do have to search about a bit. And as I say, certain areas are, are picking up. They certainly are. Um... But we are far from the heady days of the, those 80s and 90s, you know. Um, same goes for the Lobben though as well, you know. That could do with some TLC, some good tender loving care. But there's good fish to be had still. You've got, as an angler, you've got to think more, really more in depth into how you're presenting bait, where the fish might hold up. You're fishing literally for pockets of barbel, you know, in pods, in little areas. Um, so you have got to be, you know, really, really, I wouldn't say always thinking outside the box, but, you know, thinking down to the minuscule, minute details of swim selection, coverage, even just slight differences in the depth of a riverbed. You can, I've known, on this river this season, I've known with areas where I've led it about, there's been a slight difference of variance in depth, could be only be a foot, and that's been the difference between having bites and not having bites. As strange as that seems, going from like five foot to six foot has made a difference. Um, and, and it's things like that, and looking for areas where there's cover, even looking at the most daft looking swims, 
swims, as you know from my videos, that other anglers wouldn't want to fit a chair into. They can be spots where you're, you're fishing and other anglers just walk past them. And if you fish those, you get bonus fish. You'll pick up fish that are not necessarily being pressured. Anyway, I'm waffling. Do excuse me, guys. Um, I have got a lot of adrenaline bubbling up after that run of blanks. So, yeah. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, as I said earlier, do take time to give it a thumbs up. And I hope, wherever you're enjoying fishing, hope you're having a good one. You know, it's autumn time. It's an enjoyable time of year. There's a beautiful smell about it. There's the old misty morning already. And there's a smell of um, fermenting fruit about, that's for sure. And, and the old fermenting fruit case roaming the riverbank. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Wherever you're dangling, do take care. I'll catch you on the flip side on another Fishing for Memories vlog. See you soon, guys.